Yeah. Good morning, Grindel. Yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> Take your time. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think you lost some weight. <sighs> uh, all right, I'm better. Hello. Hi, Grindel. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love just, you. I know that I haven't spoke to you for a while, and there's a lot of things going on right now. For so, sure. Um, I thought maybe you needed a reptilian perspective on some of this. Please. So, because some of these other perspectives are a little namby-pamby, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you need a little down-to-earthiness every now and then instead of a poofy sky thing you know but anyway not that that's a bad thing you know not no no it's not but it is a little too uh i mean they they sugarcoat it to the point where it's like too sweet for me but anyway yeah i i i need you to ask some questions because i know there's some questions out there that need some really down to earth answers. So give it to me. <laughs> okay, well, hey, before we ask any questions, I'm seeing a few lining up here, but I'd really like to know if you have anything you wanna tell us right now at this time. I mean, it's October 1st, everybody's talking about these changes that are coming and we got oh, all this yeah. information last week at the webinar through Bashar. So can you speak on any of this? Yeah, I can. There's a lot of changes coming. Some of them are not so sweet. But it'll turn out to be in your best interests in the long run, if you know what I mean. But like this presidential thing, yeah. But anyway, that's all I'm going to comment on that because it's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen. But I have to tell you, Right now, there are some energies that are coming into play. People are feeling tired, antagonized, angry, frustrated. You'll get used to these energies and they will balance out and you will catch up with them. So try to be as sweet as possible, like me. So, you know, I'm, although sounding a little gruff, I am still a sweet and wonderful guy. So I speak with my big old reptilian heart. So, um, yeah, so we love you for that. But yeah, it's going to be tough for some of you, especially some of the channelers that are not feeling all that great right at, right at this time. And the energies are such that if you, if you, rest a little more you feel a little better it is because the energies are so fast they're moving a lot faster than what your body is used to and so they're bringing you down they told me to let you know about that i think somebody else told you about that too but i don't know that the thing is you'll catch up but it's not just one set of energies it's earth energies fourth dimensional energies energies from the center of the galaxy blah 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 so you don't have to know what they are just get used to it okay try to integrate as much as possible through meditation like intend your meditations to bring this energy in so that it makes you feel good and not crappy so a lot of people are just hanging in there and they're not really dealing with it so deal with it okay do not just walk around with grumpiness all around. Just do something about it. So um, intend your meditations for it all to come in and equal out. And it will work a little faster. Spirit has a way of helping out, you know. So, But anyway, any other questions? Oh, that was my comment. But any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Grindel. Yeah. yeah we do have some questions. Uh, first up, we have Sheer. Yeah, cheer, baby. How's it going? 
How is Sparkle? Spiracles? Sparkle. Sparkle? Who is Spark? Oh, yes. All right. He's fine. What do you want to know about him? He's or she's? Whatever. Your it's just helper. energy to me. Ah, okay. Um, no, just um, from my, what I know, I know that you have a new assistant. Oh, Sparkle. Oh, I thought you were talking about another reptilian that I know. But Sparkle is, yes, the female counterpart that you guys are talking about. Sparkle is a female that helps me out every now and then. She's doing great. Um, but I haven't seen her for a couple days because I've been traveling a lot in beha on behalf of some of the people of this planet are sending me around to different places to do a couple different things. So, um, but I haven't seen her in a couple of days, but I know that she's doing very well. Okay, and I only, and I also want to ask you, you will understand the question, uh, what about the meeting after the summer or earlier uh, October? Yes. The one that's coming in December? Uh, oh, your meeting. Yeah. Or do you mean the next meeting of the government? I will speak with you in private, but what about the government meeting? Yeah, it's coming in December. Probably very close to the middle, 13th through the 18th, something like that. Don't worry, it'll come. I see. And anything that we're supposed to speak about? Anything new? Oh, uh, yes. You will have plenty to speak about by the time December gets here, believe me. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. You'll have a lot more information because a lot of things are going to happen. At least, apparently, at this time, the way things are moving, there's a lot of things going to happen. It doesn't look like things are going to be stopped. Um, there was a possibility for one thing to happen or two things or three things. Right now, it looks like everything's gonna gonna transpire. Oh, that's great! I know that's a, well, great, yeah, a great sound. Know, but you'll you'll decide then. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, I will speak with you privately. Thank you very much, and it's good to see you. I love to see you, Sheer. Who has another question? Um, so, Grindel, since we're still talking about these changes, I have this burning desire to ask if it is related at all to, because um, we know, <laughs> we've had all these things ruled out, and I know we have to just keep guessing, because that's what we do, right, and yeah. try to not have expectations, but um, yeah. is it related to stuff outside of humanity and Earth, or is it solely Some stuff here? It. But there's stuff right here on your planet. A lot of it is right here, third-dimensional yeah. bull crap that you're going to have to deal with. So, oh. um, And in saying that, it's going to make a lot of changes in the way you think about things in the future. It's going to make a, a, a great deal of difference to how your, your life is. Um, how you move on in a thought process that was once one way and now it's another way. And that's all I can tell you about that. But yes, it's very much third dimensional. Much of it is. About 80% 80, 80 of it is third dimensional. <laughs> oh, yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, yeah. prayers and blessings to everyone for everything coming up. Definitely. Yeah, okay. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Grendel. Yeah, whatever. So, okay, next we have a question from Sam. Sam. Hey, Grendel. Hey. I miss you. Of course you do. <laughs> I miss you too, though. You know, I miss Earthlings sometimes. Don't tell anybody. Ha ha. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Earthlings are pretty cool at times. Y you know, whenever, you know, you put put your big boy pants on so. <laughs> yeah and, you're cool um, I got a question regarding some politics here um, there was some rumor that um, 
Um, what's her name? The lady? Ah. Um, I forgot. The, the ladies, the uh, the ones running against Trump. Hillary. Oh, Hillary. Yeah, they, they, uh, they say uh, she might be dead and they're using a clone to uh, represent her. Is that true or that's just rumor? Can you clarify no, that? No, that's not true. She's not dead yet. Okay. Okay. And uh, can you give us a little bit <clears throat> more information on what's going on with the, this politics? The politics, yes. Your people are really starting to see the actual personalities of these people during the debates. And about 50% of the population, I find this interesting, is just sticking with their candidate because the other one isn't any better. But they know their candidate sucks. So they absolutely know that. They absolutely know they're they're both liars and cheats and well the one I'm not going to go into it but anyway um yeah they're going to just stick who they're sticking with the other one because the other one is ain't any better so this is going to cause a real bad problem when it comes down to the final decision because the people that hate one more than the other have the opposite problem that they are equally hated by the other side. So there's going to be almost like civil war when this happens. So because they, that's how much they are divided in their thought processes. Do you understand that? Okay. Oh, I think I'm talking too much. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, they both suck. Just pick one. <laughs> Great. Um, another question here is, uh, I just want to know something. It's a personal nature. In my one of my meditation, I saw a white alligator standing on two feet. I don't know what it represents. Can you connect with that and share a little bit? Um, I would have to know a little bit more about the dream, but it sounds like an ascended master from it's a different group of uh, race of people. Yeah. If it is an ascendant master that you're dreaming about from a reptilian race, they probably have a message for you. Okay. Was the rest of the dream as interesting or as vivid as the white alligator? Okay. Okay. Thank you. That was for, in my meditation. That's all I wanted to know. Ah, there was a message then. Okay. He will speak to you later. Okay. Great. Thank you. Much love to you, Grendel. Great. Nice talking to you. Same here. Thanks. And you can disregard everything I say because it's all crap. <laughs> okay, Grendel. <laughs> Thanks. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just don't want anybody to get, you know, real mad at me or anything. <laughs> Not well, that it matters. Exactly. And, yeah, there's, it's so much controversy. I mean, obviously, we, we can't make a yeah, prediction. Yeah, yeah. What's the next question? Yeah. Uh, next we have Carolina. Hello, Grindel. Ah, Carolina. Hello, Grindel. Nice to see you. Hello. You okay? How are you, my dear? I'm okay, thank you. Much Good. Love. I'm around you every now and then. You know that, right? Yes. I wanted to ask you about that. Um, yeah. I, I saw you and Sparkles coming to me uh, a few, yeah. week, few weeks ago. Yeah, and and you imprinted uh, something in my forehead. I was wondering if you could tell me more about it. No, we well, we were just giving you a a blessing. Also, it was a lit, It was not an implant, but it was a crystal. The reason for the crystal is for your that portion, your third eye, to get a little stronger because we have some work for you to do with us. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, yeah. so, yes, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I Sparkle have, says, hey. And I say hello back. Much love. <laughs> yeah, she's here now. She's... Oh, oh brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Grindle, uh, my human son, um, I have seen his eyes slit. And so I was wondering if you could tell me about his DNA, whether he's reptilian or, or something. There is some reptilian in him because of you, 
but we have also been working with him on the side a little bit. And um, he's very interested in the crystals and the stones and things of these nature. And that's because they're going to have some significance to his future. They're also guiding him with some energies and powers. Not a bad thing. Not a bad thing. To be oh. close to the to the earth and the information that's collected there. You see, stones and crystals have earth information, but it's also from beyond earth in the sense that I, uh, these crystals and stones can connect to other places. So, but the first thing they do is connect you to the earth and ground you and put you in a place where you have an understanding of mother nature and the things of that particular realm or density so then after that then they can help you to connect to other places and be communicating with other worlds right okay he's he's looking for a crystal right now to buy um is there anything you can suggest for him uh he already has the ones that are most effective for him he has the rose quartz are really working for him very, very well, as you know. Yes, but, um, yes. I would like to see him get perhaps something green, malachite, something okay. of that nature, because he needs to, uh, more than a crystal, a stone that uh, connects his heart chakra to some things around him. I think he has a little bit of malachite, maybe. But I don't, he needs another little, a little more for heart connection and for uh, uh, peacefulness. He's not at peace at some times. Do you get that? Yeah. Okay. He needs that peacefulness that the heart chakra can give him also. He chose aventurine, green aventurine this morning. Yeah. Okay. I think malachite will help him. Malachite. Malachite. Thank you so much, Gringo. Respect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, later. Bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you, Gringo. Okay, we have yeah. Pavel next. Hello? Pavel. Hey, Gringo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, great. It's really nice to talk to you. Nice to speak to you. Thanks. So I have a <clears throat> first question. Um, I had a child dream from the age of three or four that a reptilian was uh, chasing me and I was uh, shielding myself with a white light. Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, there are. Back then, when, they, when you were younger, there were reptilians that were still doing... Uh, some abducting and things of that nature, you were being protected from that because you were to, to, uh, to move forward. And they would have probably put a lot of implants in you or, or did some experiment or maybe even given you reptilian DNA, which you do not need. You, for your particular purpose, you need to stay away from the reptilian DNA. So... Uh, it would just ruin your thought processes. You would be a mess. So that's why you were uh, protected. But those are those creatures are not allowed to do that anymore. So you, thank goodness that you, they didn't get to you. So that's good. Okay. I'm not saying that all reptilians are good like me, but I'm saying that they there was a period of time when they're it was a free for all with abduction on your planet. So, but not anymore. There's still abductions happening, but they're very quietly done because if they get caught, they will be in big trouble. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, thank you. It was, yeah. Uh, second one, I had the. Um... I have uh, you talking about stones, and I bought uh, Shungite stone. 
uh, can you tell me? And I have uh, two stones on my neck. Can you tell me if this uh, is happening? Something? It's if they're doing something what for me. What kind of stones are they? Stone guy. It's a black stone from north of Russia. Ah, it's. Oh yeah, those. I see. I don't know them by their names sometimes. That one is. <coughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> those ones are not earthly stones. Um, they're sometimes they're from um, off world, and they are very powerful. The reason Russia has so many of these particular stones is because there was a lot of battles fought in in the the galactic on in the Siberian and Russian areas while your Earth was young, and so therefore these stones have some off world materials in them like tektite has off-world material only in a different way these are off-world materials that were created by aliens not as tektite is a natural mineral a natural these ones are have some elements that they do not know what they are so but they are very powerful and if you intention them they're very healing they're very comforting and they're very they you can use them for opening heart chakras etc okay um so you said that i might have many implants like i feel um the problems with like my my to uh, th uh the lower chakras or maybe can it be connected with implants and stuff like that yeah, you have implants. <coughs> what is it about your lower chakra that you're questioning? <laughs> um, what is it about your uh, root chakra that you you're questioning? I think the problem not with the root chakra. I think maybe it's uh, with the second one, the orange one. It's, yeah, uh, the sacral, the orange yeah. one. Oh, they want me to take a drink of water. <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, I never was fond of nipples. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um there were um there is some root chakral stuff going on with you and sacral. It is because of some awakening in your kundalini. I see that now. How that started to awaken, I'm not sure. But uh, you do have some implants, but they're not affecting that. This is something that's happening naturally in your body. Your kundalini has been opened by something. Are you aware of that? No, no. Actually, I'm not. Whenever you, the kundalini is open, uh the root shock the root chakra is the first affected then the sacral and the sacral will cause you to be uh have greater uh passionate feelings feelings of of uh sexual things happening and stuff but i'm not sure how the how it started but your kundalini is moving up through the chakras Okay, yes, because I feel a, a, a knot, an energy knot in the second chakra, I think. And I don't let know how to see, open let it. Let me see if perhaps you have a little blockage there because, A, there could be several reasons why there's a blockage at the sacral area. Because, A, first of all, the, the root chakra is all about survival and, and connection to the earth and... Uh, instinctual creativity and mating and things of that nature whereas the sacral is more aware of what's happening so more aware of what the creativity and having children and uh, sexuality and uh, creativeness and all that so the thing is about this is if you have a creative block of some sort then you can you possibly have a block at your sacral Either that or you're, 
I don't know if I want to say this in front of everyone. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, there's other things that you could be dealing with with your sexuality. Things like that. You understand? Uh, yes, I think I do. I think I do. And Excellent. my last question is, um, <clears throat> I really uh, uh, had a problem to ground myself. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Can you help me with that? That's, or? that's part of the block at the second level. Because you are not getting all the way grounded enough to move up the your kundalini to move all the way up so what you need to do is take a look at your third dimensional activities are you being more <laughs> less third dimensional than you should if you spend too much time in the fourth dimension or reading about the fourth dimension or imagining it or or Thinking about things that do not pertain to the third dimension, you may have a hard time grounding. So that means you should be uh, focusing on keeping your feet flat on the ground, keeping your body in line with third dimension, and digging your roots deep into Mother Earth. And if you do meditation, do a grounding meditation intention. That, you, that it helps you to ground and that it helps you to, to become more stable on the third dimensional thought process. You understand? Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you very much, Gwendolyn. You are welcome. I could go in to many different ways to do that, but I think for you that your meditation for grounding will be very helpful and to make your feet feel like roots into the ground and suck okay. up that earth energy yes yes and uh, my final question and so just pop into my mind i feel my wife has a really uh really reptilian energy <laughs> is it correct and what i can balance it uh, how i can balance it let me hear uh think about her for a moment i have to connect to her i have no idea dina is yeah that <coughs> Is she near you? No, no, actually not now. That's why I can say it's loud. All right. Yes, that's why you're able to talk freely. I understand. Um, you know, women, you know, you can't really talk freely sometimes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> wow, I know that. But um, it's all right. Some of them you can talk freely to. But when they have reptilian in them and they have human in them at the same time, uh, beware, beware. <laughs> but anyway, let's see. Mm. All right. Think about, yes, there you go. You're connecting with her now. I feel it. Yeah, yeah, she has some reptilian. Oh, but, oh, something more than that. She has a little insectoid as well. They can be pretty nasty times, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yes, you're dealing with some insectoid and reptilian energy. And when that, when that gets stirred up, then there's, you're, there's nothing you can do. You just go, go put yourself in the corner because it ain't going to stop for a while. Is that the problem? It just keeps going? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yes. Actually, I, I thought so. It just keeps going, and they have something set in their brain, and there's no way to erase it because it just. Bleh. I'm sorry that you had to de have to deal with that, but you know I had to deal with it, so eh, you can too. Uh, <clears throat> but what you do is is that you have to be yourself as well and she's depriving you of who you are in some ways whenever she tells you who you are you do not have to accept that because that is all who she is that she is telling that you that you are you understand that yes yes and so you must understand 
that when you stand up to her, you must say, look, I am a person too. I have thought processes that are valid. I'm so happy that you have a good and valid opinion. Now you can just keep it to yourself. Okay? I've already heard it. Now, if you can't do that, then run as far away as you can because she ain't going to change. The thing is, you have learned, you have to learn to tame her now. That's the only way. And it's, it's through being uh, very direct. You have to be very direct with her. You may say to her, yes, I understand your opinion, but that is your opinion and not mine. That is how you feel, and I do not feel that way. Or the, you, you may want me to do that, but I am not going to do that for this reason. And you have reasons why you don't want to do the things that are set there. So you have to be direct. That's the only way with reptilians and insectoids. The only thing they understand is directness. Now, you don't have to be mean. You don't have to be, you don't have to be real mean. But you could say, honey... You're a little loud. I understand what you're saying. I just don't agree. I'm sorry. I love you very much. But I'm going over here right now. You know, because she's not going to agree with you. There's no way. I'm sorry. So, but you can deal with it. And she can understand that you are a strong person as well. But if she's... If she's violent, then forget it. So, um, because you can say whatever you want, but when violence comes into it, eh, run, run. <coughs> Sorry, that's my advice. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. You understood that perfectly. I know you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I understand it perfectly too because I see what what you're dealing it's not as bad as I made it sound everybody but yeah maybe it is I don't know but anyway well, yeah. thank you Grindel yeah, yeah we love how straightforward you are yeah well can't help myself <laughs> it's great <laughs> um, okay next we have a question from Krellick uh -huh. Relic. Yeah, how are those dogs doing? They're fine. Wonderful. Love them dogs. They're great. They're great. Tell me, what's your question? I actually have three questions. Um, what is the first one is what is the climate, the temperature like on some of the planets that your people inhabit? Oh, very good question. Because of course. Not all the planet is the same climate. Just like your world, there's different climates at the poles. There's different climates at the equator. But our people are used to about 80 degree weather, about 80% um, of the year. The reason for 80% of the year is because of how elliptical the 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 uh, revolution around our sun is and how far away we are. We're actually closer to the sun than the earth is to its sun. So we have a higher temperature. The atmosphere is a little denser in some ways because it keeps the heat in also. But uh, there's all kinds of things I could explain about that, but... Uh, it's, uh, we, we prefer about 80 degrees. And we prefer very uh, large veg vegetated areas because some of us eat vegetables and small animals and th different things like that. But we're still hunters. We always will be, I think. Even though we have evolved to beyond that, it's fun to hunt. But I know that some of your people don't believe in eating meat and all that. But it's who we are. So that's the yeah, deal with it. So we're not bad because we eat the little animals. That's a, we, They're delicious. So, um, but I know some of you only eat vegetables. Some of you only eat this and that and the other thing. But 
uh, more power to you. I'm going to eat my little furry thing. So, um, but it is a wonderful planet uh, where I'm from. And at the, at the equator, it's very hot. Um, it's much more like 180, 200 degrees sometimes in certain parts of the year. So very few uh, live above the soil in that area. Some are underground. But still, there are animals and things. They have their underground um, uh, tunnels that reach for thousands of miles under the earth and things of, uh, under their earth, our earth, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's not called earth, but that's what you call your place. But just to make a reference, it's like an earth. Yeah, wait, you know what I mean. So there's thousands of miles under there that we can tunnel through and get to different places on the planet, even under some of the oceans. We're good like that. So, all right, next question. Uh, do your people have uh, snouts or elongated faces? Sort of short. Sort of short. Not real long like crocodiles or alligators. It's, but more like that than, say, the Elias Shandai Zendi. Theirs are real short. Ours are a little longer. Yeah, we have a little longer snout than they do. But it's not real long like an alligator. <laughs> not like that, no. And yeah. my, my third question is, a few years ago, I had a dream where I met a reptilian being, but I ended up jumping on him and I started beating him. I, yeah, um, nice guy you are. Why were you beating on him? I wasn't yeah. sure if he was a good being or a... Or a or a malevolent one. It was my first experience uh, with a reptilian. Um, uh, well, I think that be that dream just shows that you're a little bit afraid of meeting reptilians in person because there are good reptilians and bad reptilians. So you assume that when you meet a reptilian, you're going to have to protect yourself. So, okay, that's fine. But um, they won't let you jump on them and beat them. They'll beat you to death first. But um, you may be afraid of them. I would try to communicate first. But that's a dream about a fear of reptilians, basically. And I understand that there's many of you on your planet that have a fear of reptilians. I don't know. Maybe because we're so blunt. I'm not sure. Or maybe because they did the, so many of the... Um, Abductions, Greys did the worst of the abductions. I mean, they were the most cruel. Even the even the um, reptilians weren't as cruel as the Greys. So I'll have to defend them in that area. Yeah, I actually had a I actually had a reptilian friend who was a member of your race that dealt with uh, uh, protecting me sometimes. Oh. Why? Why did they reject you? Oh no, he was just one. Of, he was just one of uh, some of the people that were protecting me because, according oh. to to Kerr, that there are some beings that don't like me because of what I am doing. Oh, I understand now what you're saying. Okay, yeah, but still, that dream was a fear of reptilians' dreams. But you may have friendly reptilians, but if you're not sure who they are, you still fear them. So, but. Yes, I'm sure you could still have a reptilian friend. It's, I, I know that earthlings have similar dreams about each other. They're not sure who's safe and who's not safe. So it, they do have dreams that perhaps this person not, is not safe or that person is not safe. So you understand where I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Thank you, Grendel. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have we have a question next from Jess four four four. She's yeah. asking 
A group of greys are manipulating my chakras, keeping me sick and my vibrations low. Elias is the main grey. He has a diamond on his forehead. Can you help in my protection and their release from me? Is this oh, yeah. vendetta he has against me from a specific past life experience that I can clear? Much love and thank you. Yeah, for you'll have to go into that past life and clear it. And then he'll be gone because he won't have anything left. If you go into that past life regression, clear it up, <clears throat> forgive everybody and have them forgive you, which is possible. Because once you forgive them or apologize to them, then they have to forgive you. And then they do not have a vendetta against you any longer. However, the, the gray with the diamond on the forehead is a member of royalty. So you must have done something in royal family to these greys. So um, you don't just have greys walking around with diamonds on their forehead. That's very unusual. So therefore, it's a very powerful individual, this particular grey. Please find out what this past life is. Actually, hold on one moment. Yeah. Just four, four, four. <coughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're going to have to go back. He's pretty powerful, and he has a pretty good hold on you right now. Do a meditation that you can see this past life. He is blocking me from doing anything with you at all. So do a meditation. When you meditate, make sure that you get into your heart chakra and that you can see this past life for what it really was so that you can get rid of this guy. He's bad news. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm sure um, she will follow that advice or at least consider it. So thank you, Brindle. Definitely appreciate yeah, well, it. She can go to someone, too, to do a past life regression. But if she can do it herself, it costs less money. Yeah, so that's right. That's good. For sure. But if you can't, save your pennies, honey. You need to get rid of that guy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have a question next from Sarah. Sarah. Hello, Grendel. Much Sarah. love to you. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have a question. Recently, my eyes have been glossing over while I'm awake. And then after it glosses over, I feel energies connecting to my third eye. Yes. And it is happening more often than it ever did ever before. This is something yeah. new. Yeah. And you I'm wondering a what lot that of is. Work with the Hathors. And um, I talked to them about that because they're the only ones that are really, really working with you. They have uh, ideas of how to increase your energy and your toning abilities. They are really really wanting you to be stepping out and becoming something extraordinary in, in this particular realm so they are working with you to be make you actually a little bit more a hathorn in hathor in their in your presentation so they are working with you uh but um they're actually taking are you missing time as well? Not that I'm aware of, but there are a lot of energies uh, connecting to me every day. Yes. Um, I, I'll talk to the Hathors for you, but they're... They, no, I'm not saying anything wrong. I just want to know what that was about. Yeah, it's all awesome. about them. In, in, they're, in, they're modulating and making improvements on on your 
human portions and making them a little less human. If that's something that you are okay with, then continue. But I would speak to them because I don't know if they ask permission to alter your physiology in some ways and your mental psychic abilities. But I think that you are in uh, a good connection with them. They are just making you, they're altering you actually. So, yeah. So this has nothing to do with the Nagas then? The Nagas are in favor of this, but the, it's the Hathors that have all the power. You know, <clears throat> the Nagas are actually supporting with energies. Yes. You're feeling Naga energy as well. Yeah, I'm feeling both are <laughs> yeah. happening. Yeah. They're supporting. There's no question. Yeah. No question. Okay, but you don't have anything specific about what's happening with the eyes. No, it's just an alteration, and it will help you to become a greater toner and more psychic. Awesome. That's what it's I've all been about, asking honey. for that. Yeah. yeah, that's what it's all about. Okay, very well. Thank they you. Let me know all the full extent of what they're doing, but that I do know. All right. Very yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Much love. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Grindel. Interesting. Um, we have a question next from the YouTube live chat from yeah. Allie. Allie. And give me one second here. Okay. Allie would like to know. Yeah. She said. Um, yeah, I go. <clears throat> Yeah. I think I saw a reptilian during the daylight when I was 12 in Africa. Could you please expand on that? And do you mm -hmm. have any messages for me? Yeah. It's amazing how many reptilians are in South America and Africa. They're all a lot. That is the area that we most relate to on your planet is the densely forested areas and the high humidity and temperatures so yeah you probably did no question i i believe you probably did see a reptilian there are a lot of them there the other thing about a message for you is that you've had some visitations recently and they're going to continue and I'm not sure who it is that's visiting you. It's not reptilians, but it is, there is a species that wants to make you an ambassador to their, their planet, but they have not yet revealed themselves to you fully. Are you aware of that? Oh, I don't know if you can talk to them. I don't know. But they're, they are there and they are watching you and seeing how you react to their energy. You understand this, correct? She probably does, yes. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. How are you doing, Grindel? Yeah. And how is Jim? Yeah. What do you what else? <laughs> um, okay, we have a question next from Sheer. Sheer. <laughs> hey Grindel. Yeah. Well, a couple of days ago, maybe a week ago, I had um, a very bizarre dream. And a part of him, I think it was uh, when I was in a dark field and I saw three dragons. And three what? Like full with light, uh, white light surrounding them. Three what? Three dragons. Oh, three dragons. All right. And there was a white light around them? Yeah. First time I saw a dragon, I wanted to see one since I was a child. It was the what? first time. What I... did the center one look like? Was it different than the other two? 
I don't remember. Or were they all three the same? Well, I remember one of my friends or someone in my human friend form um, asked me if I know their names. And I think it was the names of my friends, but I was frustrated that I didn't recognize their name. But I did ah. saw them. Something about it. I think it was a teaching moment or something. Ah. All right. Let me see if I can get to the meaning of that because usually when there's white lights around anything, it could be ascended masters, it could be someone in spirit, it could be a couple of different things. But you did it seem like there was a message attached to this dream? Well, it was very bizarre and very long. In a part of it, I think it was a dream within a dream, and I had a hard time to see. It. Then I just saw with one of my eyes, and then I woke up. It was very bizarre, then went to a lot of places, you can say. I think they were there to let you know that they were three of the three of the dream masters from the draconian species. Usually the dream masters appear in threes, and what is meant by that is they're opening up your thought processes so that dreams can become realities. So you're in a state where some of your dreams are becoming realities at this time, and they're telling me that that is why you traveled to a lot of different places, is you were picking up evidences of your dreams that you were, that you are now manifesting. Okay. I don't understand. know what those dreams are, but they certainly must be interesting for sure. <laughs> Definitely. I, most of my dreams, I can't even say one word about them. It's just... Uh, too bizarre in a good way, like. Yes, I think that what happened is now that you're bringing fourth dimensional ideas into third dimensional, uh, fourth dimensional aspects, and because there are some things that are part of your future that are actually from the fourth dimension, from Remulac and Amok. So therefore, they are bringing some of this information to you so you can move it into a third dimensional reality. Yeah. Is there something I should do or just wait? Um, if there is, I don't know what it is. They'll have to, Remulac will have to tell you about that. But okay. I can see that they're behind it. Okay, thank you very much. That's good. Yeah. Amok. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have a question, <clears throat> excuse me, next from Liney. And Liney, are you able to ask yourself? I know you popped back in. Yeah. Great. Yeah, cool. <clears throat> Hi, Grindel. Greetings. Hello. Um, first of all, I want to send my love. And mine. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay, no long time no chat to you. Um, yeah, the, some of the up. I don't want you to get in trouble here, so don't answer it if um, if you don't want to. But um, is some of the upcoming stuff um, partly to do with disclosure as well? There will be a little bit about that, yes. But the things that are will be happening will be on particular continents in continental ways the the north american continent the european continent the asian continent those are the three big players but i can't say more than that in fact they say that's too much to that's say but uh, <laughs> uh, there's nothing <laughs> how, how, how about the uk are we is there upcoming you have you are actually a catalyst the United Kingdom is actually a catalyst for some of the things that will happen. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, also, uh, I was interested to know, um, 
there's um, a, a lizard on our planet called a moni monitor. What? There's a big lizard on our planet called a, mo a monitor. Yes. It's really big. Is um, is uh, there any beings um like that or relate closely related to them? Yes, there are. There yeah. are beings similar to a lot of different animals on your planet. So, but I couldn't tell you the species, but I know that some of these species that look similar to some of the animals that you point out are not highly evolved yet, but they are intellectual in the sense that they are going through their own evolution. And with that, just as on your planet, some of these evolutions are helped along by other species. <laughs> naughty, naughty. <laughs> but it happens. <laughs> but look at you guys. You are like so successful as a hybrid species. The most successful hybrid species in the galaxy slash universe. So that is why your ascension is so important. Wow, that's nice. Oh, d just one last thing. Um, it, have you got any messages for me? Is there anything I should know? Yeah, yeah. Um, you're, uh, you're going to a, a be invited to go to ERA very shortly for a very special occasion. So Ken Jean will be inviting you very shortly. Oh, lovely. I look forward to that. <laughs> Thank you, um, Grindel. Much love to you. Much and love. love. Not too much love, yeah. I don't. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Yeah. I love that. Not too much love, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's your thing. Yeah, just like a temperate baby. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, we have a question from uh, Jonah next, and um, she's mm -hmm. asking, let's see, she says, I've been doing sign language, galactic language, translating uh, some events I attend in my life. Yeah. Maybe, maybe channelings. Um, can you please tell me what is the purpose of the translation and for what species? If you're doing galactic, I'm not sure which galactic language you're doing. However, um, the interpretation and the speaking of the language is to let people know that you are connected from uh, from off-world way. And the the uh, the interpretation is to let them know that this is beyond something that you may know as an individual. You are speaking to people about information that they need to know and may resonate on several different levels with, and that is a beautiful thing. Now, that will become something else in the future. You may be able to start channeling without the use of a language. You may be able to start bringing messages without using another language. So we'll see. It depends on what your path of evolution with this particular uh, this particular gift is. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Yeah. All right. Um, we have a question next from Ina, who mm. um, had said, I can't handle the current energies at all, or maybe it's something else. Do you have any advice for me? Yes. Meditate on and meditate on these energies. Make them part of who you are so that you can handle them. You have to be a part of the earth energies, the galactic energies, and the fourth dimensional energies so that you were able to move forward in your purpose. It if obviously you are someone that is highly evolved because Otherwise, these energies would not be affecting you so badly. So you need to get them into perspective. It's not, don't say I can't handle them. Say I need to be able to handle them. Let's do a meditation and let, bring in 
some understanding how to get a handle on these because they will be awesome in the future for you. You cannot just reject them. They're going to be there. They're going to, they're not going away. They are not going away. Well, the fourth dimensional energy in this present state will go away by the end of January, but the other energies, absolutely not. But if the best thing to do is incorporate them into yourself with meditation, make sure that you can, that they are part of who you are because it's going to open your eyes to a lot of different energy uses that have not been used before in this dimension. Third dimension is changing. Third dimension is changing. So be aware of that and don't say I can't handle it because you can. You just are weak right now from the being beat up by the energies. Go into a meditative state and, and uh, put an intention on it that you now are starting to become one with it because that is your greatest ally right now are these energies they'll keep you safe they'll keep you healthy they'll keep you moving forward so don't reject them yeah okay so so it's the energies it's not um someone manipulating me or you know no. if you're feeling that it's the energies it's the energies they're being very honest no let me see hold on you do have beings around you, but they're not manipulating you. The energy is so hard on you because you're so sensitive to this energy change. You need to get in line with it. That's what it is. What beings around me? You have some beings around you. There's about three of them, but they're, they're not manipulating you. Good beings or negative beings? They are very good. Hold on oh. one moment, please. They're protective beings. You've been through a lot of harshness. You've been through a lot of things that humans shouldn't have to endure. And so they are there to protect you from more harshness from other beings. But what you're experiencing now is energy problems. You are so sensitive to this energy that it is causing you to be, wow, all over the place. They're going to try to help you to... Uh, meditate and get this all in line okay thank you I have another question um, yes do you have any advice for me personally regarding the coming changes um, the economy crash and everything and what's everything that's happening will be good for you because well I am in quite inner terror that absolutely paralyzes me because I have no money no job and no good people around me I'm so that alone. is why it will be a positive for you. Okay. You cannot, it, it will change how you are because it will bring people down to your level in the sense that it will bring them into your understanding and you will actually move up. They will move down and you will move up. Okay. But you must believe that. Your belief systems have been challenged to a point where it's hard for you to believe in hardly anything. So remember, this is your challenge. Get used to these energies first because that will be a big plus for you. You will not have to dwell in things coming, continuing to go down. It can't go down anymore. Let them bring us, let it come up. Okay. Grab there, um, these energies. You do have protective beings around you. Use them. They, they care about you, but they, they're not sure how to help you fully, except for the, with this meditation. They're going to try to pull you up through this. And they're going to try to, they've also already tried to regulate the energy that's coming in. You have a great deal of energy coming into you. Wow. So, and you're sensitive to it. So they're trying to regulate that, but uh, it's, oh, they can only do so much. So and therefore take matters into your own hands and meditate on the energies and getting them in line. First of all, that's the very first thing to do. Second of all, ask for the help of these protective beings to help you with 
uh, these guidelines with the energy. Help them, ask them to help you get this energy in line. And then the things that are, will be happening will actually be positive for you and not negative. Okay, um, is there any DNA infusion that would be helpful for me? One moment. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, yes, there is. But I can't tell you in front of everybody. Okay. I will tell you offline. Just write a note to the Skype, to Jim, and I will get back to him and tell you. Okay. Or can I talk to Gertrude Muir? Just... Yeah, no, I'll okay. tell you. Okay. Thank it's you. not Kirk near energy. No. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you, Grindel. Um, so <laughs> we're getting, we have a little bit more time left. We we're wondering if anyone else would like to join us this morning. Yeah, I can go. Oh, uh, but we'll miss you, Grindel. Have a good one. Uh, you know, whatever your bye byes are, I don't know. So I uh, take care of uh, our leader Zane or something. I don't know. Do <laughs> you take care uh, too, Grindel. Thank you for joining. We love you. All right. Love you. Oh, yeah. Love you too. Yeah. To <laughs> a certain, yeah, whatever. So um, <laughs> uh, I'll talk to you later. Sounds good. And, uh, oh, you, man. yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, wait. <laughs> mm.